I get a little bit patriotic sometimes. And sometimes that's for comedy purposes, and sometimes it's genuine. And this is genuine, because I really do believe that the British plug is one of the greatest designs that has ever hit the world. For loads of reasons. I mean, there's a safety feature that uh, most folks, at least in Britain, know, uh, which is that it's really difficult for a kid to take, say, a screwdriver and just poke it into one of the holes. Because up here is earth, ground for the Americans, that's a safety one. These two here are live and neutral, where the actual danger is. But they've got shutters over them. I cannot, don't try and sit at home, I cannot poke a screwdriver in there right now. What I have to do is plug the earth pin, which you can see is slightly longer, the ground pin here, in first. And when that goes in, little shutters come up and let the other pins in. So I can show that, because this extension here is really badly designed, which means I can put the plug in upside down. So if you have a look at those shutters, when I put the earth pin in, there we go, and there's now a contact for the other two pins. So you need to have a really inventive baby to be able to put one in there and another in there and then get a shot. So that's safer, that's brilliant. What about if you leave the plug halfway out? Because American, European stuff, if you leave the plug halfway out, you've got live electricity that you can kind of touch if you can get a finger in there. Well, not here. Because on the live and neutral pins on the bottom, you can see insulation extends halfway through them. If the plug is far enough in to make a connection, like that, all you can touch is the insulation. Okay, so that's the obvious safety features. What about on the inside? Because you've got to remember, until 1992, the British government did not require that electrical appliances had plugs on them. If you bought a toaster or a washing machine, you would get, almost always, a bare wire at the end. And you'd expect it to wire the plug yourself. So I got taught how to wire a plug in school, because that was still a required skill back then. Here we go, if I open this up, first there's a fuse. And that's an artifact of when the standard was made. Post-World War II, there was a copper shortage, and, uh, well, it was a lot cheaper to require a fuse in every plug and just build the circuit as one loop of cable going around the whole house than it was to have loads of individual copper strands going out all over the house and a fuse for each. So they just made the house one giant circuit, put a fuse in each plug. That's now safer. Then you've got the three wires. Blue is neutral. B, L, L for left, blue goes to the left. Brown is live. B, R, R goes to the right, live goes to the right. You can also remember that live is brown because that's the colour your trousers will go if you accidentally hit yourself with it. And finally, there's this one, the green and yellow. That's the earth or the ground wire. Now, in normal operation, that shouldn't be used, but it's basically a return path if all else fails. If something goes electrically wrong in the plug or in the appliance, that will ground it, and all the electricity will safely go away from people. Because if that disconnects and there's a problem, well, you could touch the metal bit of this toaster, and the electricity could ground itself through you and through your heart, which is bad. So instead, you have this wire here, and this is the really clever bit. This is the bit that not many people know about. You see that slack in the wire just here? In the event there's a tug on this cable and something goes wrong, and all these start fraying and coming out, the live and the neutral, the ones where the danger is, they'll get pulled out first, and then the earth wire will come out next. So in the event of damage or fraying, it's most likely that the earth wire is going to be the safe one and no one's going to get killed. So there you go, the British plug, genuinely one of the best bits of design I've ever come across, with one exception, which is that if you just let it fall on the ground because, you know, you're just throwing something out the way, it will almost certainly end up with the points pointing upwards, which means in the middle of the night, when you stand on it, it is really going to hurt.